Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, welcome to the Blessed Messages for You channel. Before we dive into today's message, I'd like to ask for your help in strengthening our community. If you haven't subscribed yet, please click the subscribe button right now. Don't forget to hit the bell icon to receive notifications about our new videos. And if this message touches your heart, leave a like and share your thoughts in the comments. Your participation is crucial in spreading God's word. Today, we're going to explore a vital theme for our Christian walk, daily walking in the spirit. Our biblical foundation comes from Galatians chapter 5, verse 16, where the Apostle Paul tells us, Walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. This passage invites us to reflect on how we can live a life guided by the Holy Spirit, resisting the temptations and desires of our sinful nature. We live in a world full of distractions and temptations. Every day we're bombarded by messages and influences that try to lead us away from God's path. It's easy to feel overwhelmed, confused, or even discouraged in our spiritual journey. However, God hasn't left us alone in this battle. He has given us His Holy Spirit as our guide, counselor, and source of strength. But what does it really mean to walk in the Spirit? How can we live this reality day by day amid the challenges and pressures of modern life? Let's explore this important theme together and discover how we can experience the fullness of life in the Spirit. First, it's crucial to understand that walking in the Spirit isn't an abstract concept or an experience reserved only for some super-Christians. It's an invitation and a command for all followers of Christ. In Romans chapter 8, verse 9, Paul states, You, however, are not in the flesh but in the Spirit, if in fact the Spirit of God dwells in you. This means that if we are true believers in Jesus, the Holy Spirit already dwells in us. The question is, are we allowing Him to direct our lives? Walking in the Spirit begins with a daily surrender. Just as Jesus taught us to pray, give us this day our daily bread, we also need to daily seek the guidance and power of the Holy Spirit. This involves starting each morning by acknowledging our dependence on God and inviting the Holy Spirit to guide our thoughts, words, and actions. A practical example of this could be a simple prayer upon waking up. Holy Spirit, I invite you to lead my life today. Help me to hear your voice and follow your direction in everything I do. This attitude of surrender sets the tone for the rest of the day and positions us to be sensitive to the Spirit's leading. The second crucial aspect of walking in the Spirit is cultivating intimacy with God through the Word and prayer. Jesus said in John 15 verse 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Abiding in Christ is essential for walking in the Spirit, and this happens when we dedicate time to be in God's presence. Daily Bible reading shouldn't just be a mechanical habit, but a living encounter with God. As we read the Scriptures, we're allowing the Holy Spirit to speak to us, teach us, and transform us. The psalmist declares, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Psalm 119 verse 105. When we meditate on God's word, the Holy Spirit uses it to illuminate our path and guide us in daily decisions. Similarly, prayer isn't just a list of requests we present to God, but an ongoing dialogue with Him. Paul exhorts us in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 17 to pray without ceasing. This doesn't mean we should be on our knees all day, but that we should maintain a constant attitude of communion with God, sharing our thoughts, concerns, and joys with Him throughout the day. Walking in the Spirit also implies being attentive to His voice. Often, the Holy Spirit speaks to us through a gentle impression in our heart, a verse that comes to mind, or through the counsel of other mature believers. In 1 Kings 19 verses 11 to 12, we see how God spoke to Elijah not in the strong wind, earthquake, or fire, but in a still small voice. We need to cultivate sensitivity to hear this gentle voice of the Spirit amid the noise of the world. A third fundamental aspect of walking in the Spirit is obedience. It's not enough to hear God's voice. 
we need to be willing to obey. James 1 verse 22 warns us, But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. When the Holy Spirit convicts us of something, whether it's to make a change in our life, forgive someone, or take a step of faith, our response should be one of prompt obedience. This obedience often requires courage and faith. It may mean going against the cultural current or making difficult choices. However, it's in obedience that we experience the transforming power of the Holy Spirit in our life. As Paul testifies in 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18, And we all, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. A fourth crucial element for walking in the Spirit is recognizing and resisting the works of the flesh. Paul enumerates these works in Galatians 5 verses 19 to 21, including sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. Walking in the Spirit means being constantly vigilant against these tendencies of our sinful nature. This doesn't mean we'll never be tempted or that we'll never fall. We all struggle with sin. However, walking in the Spirit gives us the power to resist temptation and choose the path of holiness. As Paul states in 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13, No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and He will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, He will also provide the way of escape, that you may be able to endure it. When we fall, the Holy Spirit convicts us of sin and leads us to repentance. He reminds us of God's grace and encourages us to get up and continue walking. As John assures us in 1 John 1 verse 9, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. A fifth aspect of walking in the Spirit is manifesting the fruit of the Spirit in our life. In Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 to 23, Paul lists this fruit. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. These qualities aren't something we can produce by our own effort, but are the natural result of a life yielded to the Holy Spirit. Love, for example, isn't just a feeling, but a deliberate choice to act in the best interest of others, even when it's difficult. Jesus gave us the supreme example of this love by dying for us on the cross. When we walk in the Spirit, He empowers us to love as Christ loved. Joy, in turn, doesn't depend on external circumstances, but is a deep trust in God, even amid difficulties. Paul and Silas were able to sing hymns of praise in prison because they were filled with the Holy Spirit, as mentioned in Acts chapter 16, verse 25. The peace that the Spirit produces in us is what Paul describes in Philippians chapter 4, verse 7, as that which surpasses all understanding. It's an inner tranquility that remains even amid life's storms because we know that God is in control. Patience allows us to endure trials and treat others with grace, even when provoked. Kindness and goodness are manifested in acts of compassion and generosity towards others. Faithfulness keeps us firm in our commitments to God and people, even when it's costly. Gentleness, often misunderstood as weakness, is actually strength under control. It's the ability to respond with kindness even when we're mistreated. Jesus, the most powerful man who ever lived, demonstrated perfect gentleness. Finally, self-control allows us to control our impulses and desires, submitting them to God's will. This is especially important in a culture that promotes instant gratification and personal indulgence. As we walk in the Spirit, this fruit becomes increasingly evident in our life, transforming our character to the likeness of Christ. A sixth important aspect of walking in the Spirit is being in fellowship with other believers. The Christian life wasn't designed to be lived in isolation. We need each other to grow, be encouraged, and be held accountable. Hebrews chapter 10 verses 24 to 25 exhorts us, 
and let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. When we gather with other believers, whether in a church service, a small Bible study group, or in formal moments of fellowship, we create an environment where the Holy Spirit can work powerfully. We can share our struggles, celebrate each other's victories, pray together, and build each other up in faith. Moreover, the body of Christ offers us opportunities to serve and use the spiritual gifts that the Holy Spirit has given us. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7, To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. When we use our gifts to serve others, we are cooperating with the Holy Spirit in His work of building up the church and reaching the world. A seventh aspect of walking in the Spirit is maintaining an eternal perspective. The Holy Spirit constantly reminds us that we are citizens of heaven just passing through this world. As Paul writes in Colossians chapter 3, verse 2, Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. This eternal perspective helps us keep focus on what really matters and not let ourselves be dominated by the worries and attractions of this world. Walking in the Spirit gives us a new lens through which we see life. We begin to see people and situations as God sees them. Our priorities align with His. Our decisions are made not just based on what's convenient or pleasant at the moment, but on what has eternal value. This doesn't mean we should isolate ourselves from the world or ignore our earthly responsibilities. On the contrary, walking in the Spirit empowers us to live meaningfully and impactfully in this world, being salt and light as Jesus called us to be. As mentioned in Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 to 16, an eighth crucial aspect of walking in the Spirit is being involved in God's mission. Jesus promised his disciples in Acts 1, verse 8, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. The Holy Spirit empowers us not just for our own sanctification, but to be effective witnesses of Christ in the world. Walking in the Spirit gives us boldness to share our faith, wisdom to discern the opportunities God places before us, and love to reach those who are far from God. It might mean words of encouragement to a co-worker, an act of kindness to a neighbor, or sharing the gospel with someone who doesn't yet know Christ. As we cooperate with the Holy Spirit in this mission, we experience the joy of seeing lives transformed by the power of the gospel. As Peter witnessed after Pentecost, the Holy Spirit can use ordinary people to accomplish extraordinary things for God's kingdom. A ninth aspect of walking in the Spirit is cultivating a heart of worship. The Holy Spirit leads us to a deeper appreciation of God's greatness and goodness, inspiring us to worship Him in spirit and truth, as Jesus taught in John 4, verse 24. This worship isn't limited to moments of praise in church, but becomes a lifestyle. Paul exhorts us in Ephesians 5, verses 18 to 20, And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart, giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Walking in the Spirit leads us to a constant state of gratitude and praise even in difficult circumstances. This attitude of worship transforms our perspective on life. We begin to see God's blessings everywhere, from a beautiful sunset to a friendly smile from a stranger. We learn to be thankful not just for the good things, but also for the challenges that make us grow in faith and character. A tenth fundamental aspect of walking in the Spirit is being open to His ongoing work of renewal in our life. Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 4, verse 16, So we do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. The Holy Spirit is constantly working to conform us to the image of Christ, a process that lasts a lifetime. This renewal often involves challenges and even suffering. Peter reminds us in 1 Peter 4, verses 12 to 13, Beloved, 
do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you share Christ's sufferings, that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. Walking in the Spirit gives us the strength to persevere through these difficult times, trusting that God is using all things for our good and his glory, as Romans 8 verse 28 tells us. The Holy Spirit comforts us in our afflictions and gives us hope when circumstances seem hopeless. An eleventh aspect of walking in the Spirit is developing spiritual discernment. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, Paul writes, The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him, and he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. As we walk in the Spirit, our ability to discern spiritual truth increases. This is crucial in a world full of conflicting messages and deceptive philosophies. The Holy Spirit helps us distinguish between truth and error, between what is of God and what is not. He guides us in applying biblical principles to the complex situations of modern life, where answers aren't always black and white. This discernment also helps us recognize the enemy's tactics. As Paul warns in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14, And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. The Holy Spirit gives us the wisdom to identify and resist the lies and temptations of the evil one. A twelfth aspect of walking in the Spirit is experiencing true freedom. Paul declares in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. This freedom isn't license to sin, but freedom from the power of sin, freedom to live as God created us to live. When we walk in the Spirit, we experience liberation from addictions, destructive thought patterns, and sinful behaviors that previously held us captive. The Holy Spirit gives us the power to say no to sin and yes to God's will. This freedom also manifests in how we relate to others. We're no longer slaves to fear, insecurity, or the need to please others. Instead, we're freed to love genuinely, forgive wholeheartedly, and live with integrity. A thirteenth aspect of walking in the Spirit is cultivating a compassionate heart for the lost and broken. Jesus was moved with compassion for the crowds, as it's written in Matthew chapter 9, verse 36, and the Holy Spirit produces in us this same heart. We begin to see people as God sees them, not as projects to be conquered, but as precious souls for whom Christ died. This compassion leads us to action. It might mean reaching out to a lonely neighbor, volunteering at a homeless shelter, or supporting ministries that take the gospel to unreached places. Walking in the Spirit takes us out of our comfort zone and leads us to be the hands and feet of Jesus in the world. A fourteenth aspect of walking in the Spirit is living with expectation of God's move. The Holy Spirit is the same today as He was on the day of Pentecost, and He still works miracles, heals, and transforms lives. Walking in the Spirit means living with a holy expectation of seeing God act in powerful ways. This doesn't mean we should seek emotional experiences or spectacular signs, but it does mean we should be open to God's supernatural work in our life and in the lives of others. As Jesus promised in John 14, 12, Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. A fifteenth and final aspect of walking in the Spirit that I'd like to address is perseverance in faith. The Holy Spirit is the one who seals us for the day of redemption, as stated in Ephesians 4.30, and guarantees our eternal inheritance, as mentioned in Ephesians 1.13-14. He gives us the strength to persevere to the end, even when we face challenges and discouragement. Paul writes in Philippians 1.6, And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Walking in the Spirit means trusting in this promise, knowing that God is faithful to complete the work He began in us. In conclusion, walking in the Spirit is a call for all followers of Christ. It's not a mystical experience reserved for a chosen few, 
but a practical reality available to all who believe. It's an invitation to live each day in intimate communion with God, allowing the Holy Spirit to guide us, strengthen us, and transform us. As we walk in the Spirit, we experience a life of freedom, love, power, and purpose. We become more like Christ, impact the world around us, and glorify God with our lives. Remember, this is an ongoing process. There will be days when we feel more aware of the Spirit's presence and power, and others when we struggle. But the key is to keep seeking, keep surrendering, keep trusting. As Paul encourages us in Galatians 5.25, If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. May we accept this invitation daily, allowing the Holy Spirit to guide us in every step of our journey with Christ. Before we wrap up, I'd like to thank all of you for dedicating your time to this message. If it touched your heart or brought any important reflection, please share in the comments below. Your experience can be a blessing to others who are watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the Blessed Messages for You channel if you haven't already. Turn on the bell icon to receive notifications about our upcoming videos. And if this message was a blessing to you, please leave a like and share it with your friends and family. Together, we can spread God's word and encourage more people to walk in the Spirit. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. See you in the next video.